The last time I was hunting morels, it was raining. I got my boots wet. I did not appreciate that at all. Right there. If you're new to the project, a big warm welcome. If you're a tough old root, then welcome back. Today's video, we go for a hike and do a little walk and talk about future projects and where you would find morels and even how you would farm them should you choose to do so. We don't actually find any morels, but we do find something else. So first and foremost, I'm no expert. I'm not an expert at anything, guys. I just, uh, you know, I know a lot about a lot of stuff, but I don't know a bunch about any one thing. So hunting for morels right here, perfect example right here. You see this tree? See how it's got this flaky bark on it? That's where you want to look. Right now, morel, they, they don't only grow here, but morels love bark. That's, that's what they want to grow in. So trees like this that are constantly shedding their bark. See, I'm not damaging the tree, you know? That stuff falls off all by itself in the wind or whatever. Um, and so there is a greater amount of bark in this area because of the type of tree. Um, and yeah, I got my staff right here. I do have this on it just so I don't, cause you see there's a lot, look at that. There's a lot of water around here. Um, but oh, and speak, shoot, speaking of, I need to take, I uh, make these just for personal use. Uh, by far the best way to go. Um, I can't show you that type of thing on YouTube, but it is absolutely, um, that works. It does not cycle, but it doesn't really have to, you know, just for snakes. All right, now we are ready. I don't really carry cocked and locked that much anymore. I find it's, it's more ergonomic to pull back the hammer than it is to try to find that safety. So either way, we're looking for trees like that and we're just gonna go for a hike, man. We got it, so that's our well right there. Um, and there's a service road that goes around it or you know, that goes up to it. And that's what we're gonna be hiking. We're gonna hike on, on both sides. We'll hike on one side on the way out and the other side on the way in. All right, I'm not seeing any of those trees too close right here. one little one so not only are you looking for that type of tree over oh, there's some big ones over there's some big ones right right there but the bigger they are the more likely because they've had more time to shed their bark you know like like this this little dude right here has been shedding bark doing great morels love that but he's only been doing it for a couple years you can find a bigger one he'll have a greater amount of bark around his base so let's go over here and look at that one. And I don't have a lot of time at all right now. So we're just, we're just doing this deal quick. Make sure there's none. There's one more right over there. So let's check him and then we'll cross the creek. Oh, wow. No way. Oh, I knew he had, I didn't know he had some here. This right here, this is wood sorrel and it's the real kind. You can tell because it looks like a clover, right? But the backside is purple. These are awesome. One of my favorite plants. Um, it actually grows a tuber underneath it. They're really, really small, but that is, I mean, that's food, that's edible. And right here, you can see it's flat. Now it's right beside some freaking poison oak, but that's its flower. Beautiful, beautiful. Second only to trout lily. Trout lily is one of my absolute favorites, but I love all herbs. Trout lily, bloodroot, look at that pond. <laughs> no wonder we hear frogs all the time. Let 
need to train you to smell out morels, boy. At $70 a gallon. Let's, let's look at this. Wow. Look how blue that is. That's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, that would be a fine swimming hole. You'd need to, I mean, I'd want to put a pond liner in it and clean it out and whatnot, but that is just gorgeous. Look, he's down there swimming in it. Good boy. All right, so we'll head down a little bit. I think over here is a real big pond. So we'll go a little farther down and then we'll cut in and start looking. These right here are choke cherry trees and you can hear all the bees in the whole world. Now, getting honeybees again is on my list. I mean, absolutely, I will not be happy with my life until I got some honeybees. All right, I'm seeing a lot of good stuff back, back there. But you know, you, you do something a couple times and it don't work. So you got to change it, right? The only, the only thing you know is that what you did didn't, didn't work. So this time I can't change how I treated them. You know, we did everything correctly. The only thing that I can change um, is the hive. I'm gonna make my own hive out of a log. And we'll do that. Like I don't see how that's gonna make a big difference to the honeybees and to the success rate, but that's the only thing I can change. I can change what kind of hive they're in because everything else was darn correct. All right, nothing here. So here's a swamp. Looks like it literally every time I see this, which isn't much because I don't come down here very often. Uh, it makes me think of Star Wars, like Yoda's back here somewhere. Like I say, it's basically just looking for trees that shed their bark, like these, although these are birch. That's a resource right there. Birch is good. Bir I didn't, so I don't know much about trees, right? But I know that's birch. Got paper, paper thin bark on it that's shedding. Uh, that's a resource, not only for a fire starter, but you can make birch oil. So we may have to come back for some of that. I didn't know we had that many birches over here. All right, we're finally getting into the right climate over here um, where it's got shade. There's very little competition. You're, you're usually not going to find them in a yard. You're looking for a damp, dark section of wood that doesn't get a lot of light, that has, it has dampness, but not a swamp, like back there. Um, and yeah, that, that's where you want to look. Something similar to this. I mean, the only difference between this and what we was looking at a minute ago is that this doesn't actually have standing water in it. Mushrooms, they like they like dampness, but they don't, but they, but you know, they're, they're not a water plant. They don't grow in the water. And it might be, we might just be too late. I mean, that is absolutely possible. We might just be too darn late. Cause I don't have any, I don't have any time. Honestly, today I got to be quick so I can get back to the house and work on something else. I just thought it'd be nice to bring y'all along for a hike and hopefully get some profit out of it. There's a spring up there on that hill. I don't know if you can hear the water running. Look at that giant rock too. It's so difficult to, to, for, for these things to translate with a camera. But that's a spring because we haven't had rain in a, in, a, in a little while. But I'm looking around here and this is starting to get too acidic. Right, you'll see these little crow's foot. I mean, they're very medicinal. Let me pick one so you guys can see. That right there, that's crow's foot. And it likes acidic soil. 
And obviously you can use your eyes and you see a bunch of pine trees and whatnot. So this isn't going to be the right area for it. So I think more than likely you probably missed it. Guys, I, I apologize. I should have took y'all on the last trip, but it was just a spur of the moment thing. I don't have a lot of time. Right there. That's rattlesnake root. That is supposed to cure snake bites. Now, obviously, in the 21st century, you got, you know, we got doctors and whatnot. But if it weren't, if I, you know, I wouldn't have any problems using that if that was all if that was all I had. If you're a prepper or you're into survival or off-grid or self-sufficiency, uh, take note of where these are. Um, a lot of times you'll use the root. I'm sure the whole plant, you know, for the most part, the entire plant will have some amount of whatever alkaloids or whatnot um, does the job. But with different plants, different parts will have more. So with that one, with rattlesnake root, usually use the root. Uh, that has a higher concentration. Um, if I can get myself just halfway settled, just darn get that little pallet tower finished enough for us to, to live in it don't even have to finish the rest of the house just get that done then i'll start bringing y'all along for these for these other things for harvesting herbs and for drying them out and but if this was the right time of year like i say just a couple days ago i came out i found some and even that was a bit late but i thought shoot if i found some two days ago maybe I'll drop everything and run out, run outside with the camera right now. But if it wasn't too late, we'd have found them. That's that's where you look. Cross this creek and go look at these biggins. The last time I was hunting morels, it was raining. I got my boots wet. I did not appreciate that at all. Right there. That's a copperhead. Right there. That kind of thing takes half the fun out of hunting morels, man. God, that's, that's a, Surprise me, man. That's number three. Now, was he hiding any morels? Oh yeah, that's a big one. Hot damn, that some SOB is huge. Oh, there's mama coming. All right, he's over there. So the deal is right now, I'm gonna take him, this snake back to the house, get me another round of snake shot. I wasn't expecting to need it that quick. And then we'll come back out. We'll come back out and continue our morel hunt. One copperhead ain't gonna, ain't gonna stop me. Hey! Hey! It's all right. That's me killing a snake. I like you again. Thank you. Got one. It's not a morel, but I nailed him. So, I'm still gonna look for morels. I'm just gonna take him back to the house so we can skin him and uh, get me another thing, a snake shot. Okay. Let's go, just not too fast. 
Whoa, that was too fast. <laughs> That's a copperhead, girly. Look at him, still twitching. You, you better not get my CVT dirty now. All right, well, we're gonna let that snake wiggle until he stops, and then we may skin him. I don't know, I just didn't wanna leave him there. It's good for Ivy to see him. I'm telling you, they, they're out there. You gotta look at the ground. See how hard that is to see? Yeah. See all those patterns on it? Hard to see. I'm guessing this video is just gonna be about snakes since dude can't find so either way far as snakes go just keep your eyes peeled right just look that's all you can do now i i would love i have an idea but i don't have enough money so i have an idea for mitigating some of the issue with rattlesnakes and with copperheads the only thing that i found i, I, I need some money or i need a company to sign up with me um what i'm gonna try to do if i can and it'll sound weird it'll sound crazy it may even sound stupid but what you do what i will do given given the op the opportunity just one little any opportunity at all i'm gonna get a pair of black snakes and breed them and let them let them loose um so just breeding black snake you know keeping two of them in a cage once them once the hatchlings pop out, just let you let them go. Uh, that, as far as I can think of, unless you guys know something better, as far as I can think of, that is the only decent option with a probability of success that I can think of. Because black snakes, they get bigger, right? Like so, that was a big copperhead that we shot, but it wasn't all that big. You know, we've seen black snakes; they're going across the the highway and they stretch from one side of the highway to the other one so not only do they eat copperheads in a pinch you know i'm sure it's not their favorite food but they can do it but they also you know the only reason why you have copperheads and rattlesnakes on your property or in the woods or on your homestead is because you have mice you have oh look turkey you see that let me I can get close turkey 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 what's up turkey i heard them gobbling in order to have a copperhead problem, you've got to have copperhead food. So, not only would introducing a humongous amount, I'm saying breeding them all the time. We got this little girl snake and all she's doing is just pop, 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 pop. And you're throwing all them, all them snakes, all them babies out. They will eat, they will, they will get rid of that food supply so, so that, you know, you increase the predators which decreases the prey, so there's not as much prey for the other predators to eat. Look at that, man, that must have been a big turkey. Look how big they go, that's huge. I mean, this, I have squishy mud, but that's a heavy, that's a big tom. That is a big one. All right, guys, I guess that is about it. I mean, the climate right, you can see right here, the vegetation and whatnot. This is, this is where we're going to find them. And we didn't. So I guess we just won't. We just won't find them. Not today. Not this year. If I can find a wood chipper, a good deal. That's the main thing. You can, I mean, stores exist. I understand I can go to Harbor Freight and buy a chipper. But I ain't got that much money. But if I can get a chipper, we will grow morels. You and me... And the family will grow us. Let's just start a darn morel farm. It's easy. It's simple. I mean, it's labor intensive in the in the first bit, but once you get it set up, it's good for multiple years. So you get a huge return on your investment. And really, it's a. If I get a chipper tomorrow, which I will if I can find one, uh, it'll be one year before we make the video because I'm not gonna. Oh, look at all that coal. 
Mm. I don't know, should I pick up the coal? Uh, I'm gonna make some jewelry out of coal. So I really, you know, it's almost like uh, you look at gems and whatnot. You got you have to have a uh, a a uh, cotton quality gem. So I need a really good piece of coal. But either way, you get your chipper and you build you a little bed like a raised garden bed, and you chip up only bark, just bark. And you put that bark, you fill up that bed with with bark. You give it a good water. You add in your spores. You can order those off of Amazon. Uh, if it's the right time of year, just go out and grab a natural uh, morel and just chop him up and mix him in that bark with it. And then you water it good and cover it up with brown, uh, brown paper. And then come back exactly one year later at the right time of year. It's got to be 70 during the day and 50 at night. And that's when they pop up and that's it. So it's just a, a box filled with bark with a couple morels in it. And then you forget about it. That concludes our little walk and talk. We did not find any morels, but we did find a snake. And I don't really like putting down snakes, but I don't have a choice. We got way too many, you know, I got to protect my children. That was really close to the house. Um, and I've also got to protect my animals. Uh, I don't know if, if, if it was in the actual video because Celia edits, edits them. Uh, but while the snake was in death throes, still completely more dangerous than, than normal because he's ready to just kill anything. Here comes Duna trying to lick him. So, I mean, it's not just children, it's also animals. Um, and while I am, I would rather, I'd rather not see another one my whole life and not have to put them, put them down. Um, but if you do see them, you need to deal with that, with that issue. Um, so either way, that's just part of living off grid. That's part of living in, in on planet earth is what I always say, this, this is planet earth. Right, you, you may live in an apartment and you think that that's planet Earth, but it's not. This is. Uh, but either way, I hope you liked what you, uh, you uh, saw. This time next year, we'll either go out and find morels together and actually accomplish the goal, uh, make a specific trip at the perfect time instead of just when we can, or we will farm them and, uh, and we'll be releasing the how to farm morel video. Either way, if you like what you saw, hit that button. If you're new to the project, hit that other button. You know, support the project, there are links below. Until next time here, Steve in the Woods.